Hey everyone, and welcome to Chew On Something, where we chew on something for the taste buds and the mind. Thank you so much for joining us for our eighth episode. Our eighth episode. Hey. <laughs> so this episode, we're going to be talking about hair. hair. Don't touch my hair, because it's the feelings I <laughs> my theme song <laughs> yeah so the eighth, eighth episode is gonna be all about hair over the years since we began our natural hair journey you've been what, i've been about over 15 mm. years natural i've been about 20 years natural and i've received all different types of feedback about my hair Anytime I left my house. So in my early 20s, I had a really difficult time on my natural hair journey because I was receiving so much vitriol regarding my natural hair, so much so that it affected my confidence because I was a young woman and was building up my confidence, garnering it. And every time I left my house, several times a day, I would receive derogatory comments about my hair and some love. I would have to say that the longer my hair became, mm -hmm. the less vitro I received. Uh, and I think there's something to be said as another conversation to be had about the idea of 4C hair short and 4C long and the type of love and you know admiration it gets versus when it's short. Yeah, especially just like hair in general, how sometimes longer hair seems to be more revered or think as more beautiful aesthetically wise mm -hmm. than shorter hair. But I know part which is false. Yes. But I know particularly within the natural hair community uh, and the pages I've seen, even when you see in mainstream media, 4C hair has never been the type of texture that has been coveted as much as someone that has like 3A mm -hmm. or 3B texture. And when we talk about texture and people say, oh, texture doesn't matter. It matters definitely if you're talking about regimen because 3A regimen's not going to work for my 4C regimen. Right. But also- There's no wash and go. Yeah, there's just wash and then go a few days later. Yes. <laughs> uh, or let me just interject. You can do a wash and go in 4C. It just depends the kind of- style and state you want your hair to be because some people mm -hmm. tend to stretch their hair because mm -hmm. i do braid out so my 4c texture is, is stretched versus someone that has the same texture that washes and can do a wash and go because they have a certain look or style that oh they, you mean you know like if saying. they throw it in a bun or right something or and... it just shrinkage you can just walk out of your house with your your normal shrinkage because mm -hmm. you know i could do a wash and go but my hair length would be much shorter Right. But it's I just a preference that I have. Technically, when I think of wash and go, I think it means like very quickly. Like you wash it and then you're done and then you go. Right. I, was, I mean, I used to do a wash and go back in the day. It was very quick, but my hair was very short. The longer my hair is, I can't do a wash and go because my strands tangle easily. So I have to do, for me, it's easier to do a stretched Mm -hmm. regiment on my hair so it keeps my individual strands from like tangling or locking easily but when I had short textured hair mm -hmm. I, I used to do a, a wash and go hmm. yeah. I never did a wash yeah. and go yeah. I think also to the idea when we talk about I'm getting more into hair regimen but mm -hmm. which I think some people would find interesting right yes uh, but when you talk about the tangling on wet versus dry hair there's a whole debate on that particularly for 4C texture and I'll tell you right now, I would never, never detangle my hair wet. Mm -hmm. Also, the hair, when it's wet, it's in a more weakened state. So when they say detangle your hair wet, they mean really like damp it. It shouldn't be soaking wet. But that's another, right. another tangent. I'll probably discuss on that episode mm -hmm. regimen. But when I was in my early 20s, I received so much vitriol. And I was confused. I was confused by the vitriol. I was confused about people questioning Oh, was it all your hair? I mean, I've done like a wash and go video and show my scalp and people be like, oh, yeah, it's your hair. And I said at some point I had to stop listening to that because people are going to believe what they want to believe. And I also knew there's a lot of misconceptions, stereotypes and antiquated notions wrapped around what black hair can do, particularly when it comes to black women. Like, oh, can we grow long hair? Can we grow thick hair? And the answer is obviously yes and yes. But 
in my 20s, I was so confused because we always had long, thick mm-hmm. hair. Our mom, natural hair is thick and it's past her tailbone. Yeah. So for us growing up in this environment where we didn't think it was strange or anything different for black women to have long, thick hair, I was really confounded when I started to combat these stereotypical ideas of black hair, especially when I face so much vitriol. Well, I know for me, because we had different journeys in our 20s, like I was in the fashion industry because I was a model and TK was, did a bit of modeling, but really (laughs) hated it. (laughs) I didn't that like, type of modeling. Yeah, I, hated I didn't like it. Back in the day. I didn't like it either. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another discussion. But TK was, you know, she's an incredible musician, songwriter. So, in her twenties, it was in the music mm-hmm. industry. Right. So for me, I was modeling. So I was in the fashion industry. My sister was in the music, music. industry. Mm-hmm. And for me, with my natural texture, I have so many stories. Like for modeling. As a black woman, times are changing. It could be changed much more. Right. And we should be progressed further along. Yeah, it's like but, tortoise change. <laughs> tortoise style change. But, you know, I can say, you know, decades ago, it was drastically different mm-hmm. to be a black model, a model of color. Within especially the, before social media. Before social media, mm-hmm. especially before social media, yeah. social media where you couldn't call out brands. People just weren't aware of everything that was going on because the fashion industry was so ex- exclusive. Mm-hmm. It really was. Mm-hmm. I had a successful career, but I faced a lot of struggle. It was mainly because of my hair. Right. Um, and I'm not saying because I was struggling with my texture, but because others were struggling with it. And I don't know how many times I heard that, oh, you could go so much further mm-hmm. if you just like straightened your hair mm-hmm. or put a chemical in it so it would loosen up the coals. Mm-hmm. So you have looser coals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I heard that so many times. And... Which is absurd, right? Because I look at your hair and I think it's beautiful. Right. And, and I'm saying you're cute. We are twins. I know. So <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful. No, you're beautiful. <laughs> uh, but when we talk about this idea of natural hair as well, we also have to address that a lot of the standards, as if there's a standard in beauty to begin with, mm-hmm. but if we're going to talk about this, the typical standard is usually ensconced in Eurocentricism. Right. It's always wrapped around Eurocentricism. Mm -hmm. When we talk about black hair, whether it's being professional, whether it looks presentable, it's always a tail behind, whether it's behind Eurocentricism. Right. It's always... Or as close to that, you know, aesthetic of that European or... Yes. Yes. And this is what the parameters are based upon when we're pertaining to black hair and what's presentable, what's professional. It has to ascertain with Eurocentric standards of beauty. And it's always been like this. And, you know, we can go back in history and know that this started in slavery here in America when we talk about black hair issues. Um, It's so deeply rooted in. Mm -hmm. We're not even, you know, many people within the community are not even conscious of of why they're so judgmental against a certain aesthetic when it comes to black people and people of color. To colorism. Colorism, yes. Yes. It's deeply embedded Mm -hmm. into our history. There's almost so much so that feels intrinsic, right, when we talk about these issues. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I always hearken back to my early 20s because this is when I had so much trouble accepting my natural hair. And I'll say this, before I had received all this vitriol in my early 20s, you couldn't tell me nothing. I thought my hair was beautiful. But then anytime I left the house several times a day, I'd hear, oh, your hair's ugly. Oh, what are you doing with your hair? Are you going to fix it? All these horrendous Mm. comments from strangers. And I thought... First off, I thought, why are people so obsessed with what's on my head 
Maybe you should be more obsessed with what's inside my head. Am I a kind person? I'm treating right. people with cap compassion. What's inside my heart? Yes, what's inside my heart? What's inside my heart? It's big and it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you worried about like, what's on my head? And then secondly, I, I thought, oh, well, maybe my hair is not as cute as I think it is. Mm -hmm. And then I reached this step of my journey where I said, why am I paying attention to these ugly comments that other people have to say about my appearance when they don't matter? Their opinion doesn't matter. How I feel about myself matters. And you would think, you know, I'm just joking people, but you would think the people that are saying these comments might want to take a deeper look at themselves before they judge others. I tell you, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. You got nothing You're nice know. to say. You don't say it at all. Mm -hmm. But I will speak a little bit You know, bit of the, the type truth. of people that have the most to say. Yes. And what do they say? Don't throw rocks on a glass house. Mm. You, you hear that saying? It's like an old school saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it was absolutely absurd. Right. So then I thought, then I started to get upset with myself because I was like, look. I shouldn't be paying attention to that type of vitriol and that type of hate. And I also felt some of it was from people that were so insecure with themselves, yeah. had so much hate towards themselves that my confidence or my hair and the way that I look threatened their insecurities, that threatened their lack of confidence. Right. And that bothered them. I think like the minute I started to really understand that you know, the way that people treat others mm -hmm. and how they speak to people mm -hmm. is really just a mirror. It's just a direct reflection of what's happening within them. Right. It's indicative of the character. Mm -hmm. And I thought strangers had so much to say. So when people go, oh, you hear all the time, just ignore it. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. It's not that easy when you're beginning a journey and beginning your confidence, right. right? Because if you're hearing it several times a day, it's difficult to get through. So I understand. It's the same equivalent to people that deal with bullying, and we've dealt with bullying mm -hmm. as well. And I'll tell you so much so that I would get assaulted because of my hair. When I was in New York, of all places, which I thought, hey, it's one of the most diverse places in the world. People are not going to pay attention to my hair. I'll tell you, New York is probably... One of the places I always get a lot right. of attention regarding my hair. And I was insulted. I was assaulted in Herald Square. This man came up from behind me, shoved his nasty phalanges right through my hair to my scalp and said, oh, I was just checking to make sure it was real. Mm -hmm. And let a man, I'll tell you. And this was a, this was a, a like, older black man. Mm -hmm. I was enraged. I was well, enraged. I wasn't around, y'all. Protect your older sister. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, he won't do that again. I was enraged. I went off. And I'll keep it PG. But these are the type of things I had to deal with. And I remember I had a friend at the time, and she said that she cut her hair off, her natural hair off, because she was exhausted with dealing with the questions, mm. with the curiosity, with people touching her hair. And her hair wasn't as long and thick as mine. She had beautiful hair. So I imagine if she felt like that and she was relaying these thoughts of how she felt. I think she got a taste of what I was going through. So when people say, oh, I don't mind the questions. I don't mind the curiosity. I don't mind people touching my hair. Let me tell you, I do mind. I don't mind the questions so much. See, Brown is much better at answering the questions yeah, with I don't, patience. I don't mind questions. I don't mind questions as long as you keep it respectful. Right. Um, yes, it depends on the kind of questions. If it's coming from a respectful, right. curiosity place. Yes. I mean, you you can... We're pretty good at reading energies and, like, you know, if the energy's not there, right. the respect's not there, then I don't have time for it. Right. But if it is, then I have patience. Yes, like, questions, how do you sleep? I, I lay my know. head on the pillow. I close my eyes. How, How do, do you sleep? sleep? Mm. That's yeah, such a twin moment. moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I actually just <laughs> levitate. Like, oh my, my neck muscles have become so strong. I just have levitated. And now, after over 15 years of becoming natural, I levitate while I sleep. Just my head. I just, my head levitates. I think you just give them a crazy answer. I'm just going to start giving crazy answers. <laughs> and they, they most likely will probably believe it. Yeah. I or mean, do you wash your hair? I'm like, look, when you see a black woman with natural hair, it's not on her 
to answer the questions if she doesn't feel like it. She doesn't have to teach anyone if she doesn't feel like right. it. Google is a wonderful invention. It's you know the World Wide Web. It's a wonderful <laughs> invention. Use it, you know, for some, and for personally. And I don't, I don't say that with sarcasm. Right. I say that with, you know, a lot of people have curiosities about different things, especially in, when we're talking in the context of hair. And what I'm saying is that it's not up to black women to be teachers about their natural hair mm-hmm. if they don't want to. I happen to like talking about hair, but I like talking about hair in a perspective of, hey, we need the Crown Act. Hey, we can talk about the case of Chastity Jones, mm-hmm. but there is real discrimination that a lot of black men and women face because of their natural hair. Right. And I did want to go back to something when you said that, you know, especially as growing up in your you know early 20s as a young woman and how it affected your confidence. Mm-hmm. And I always used to think about this. I was like, was it because I wasn't confident then, but I'm a very confident woman now where... I was much more in tune to all of that noise because I was so hyper aware, you know what I'm saying? Because Mm, I I was not confident. But then as I became more confident, Mm. I was like, oh, I hardly hear it. And I'm just like, is it because I'm not tuning into the noise? But I know it has a little bit to do with that, but I I do part part Mm. of it. Yes. Mm. But it has a lot to do with how things are changing, how the world's Mm. changing, and especially with social media. Um, and also, too, with the long and short hair right. conversation I was having right. before. I do definitely know, for me personally, that's how I felt. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then also, too, on the flip side of that is... Once you understand the reason why people react and say the things mm-hmm. that they do, it has nothing to do with you. It's just a reflection of who they are. And in turn, they're trying to bring you down to their level. Right. What would Michelle Obama say? They go low, you go high. Mm-hmm. But, you know... I still like my classic clapbacks. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I think when it gets physical, so that, you know, story that you just read oh, yeah. to us, that's a, that's a completely yes. different mm-hmm. narrative and how you should handle yes. things, you know? Definitely. It's just not a simple... When they go low, I go low, too. Because, you know, you put your hands on me, that's a different story. Right. And actually, that's not even going low. It's taking up for myself. Yeah. Defending myself. But <laughs> those are just like... Just a drop in the bucket of the crazy things I've dealt with over the years yeah. regarding my hair. Yeah, I remember I came off set in New York, like in my 20s, and I uh, just did a shoot, and it was actually a cover. I found out I got the cover later, mm-hmm. and it was like a beautiful, like, short afro, maybe, no, oh, it wasn't that short, maybe, but like eight, ten inches and shrunken form, and mm-hmm. came off a set shooting this cover, and then I remember walking down the street and this man like yelled like, your hair looks like shit mm-hmm. s-h-i-t excuse me uh <laughs> we think person just in case any young kids any of the youngins watching the things they hear what'd you say i said the things they hear i know they but you know hear. i don't want it yeah perpetually yeah, i don't want exactly just remember having such a great day and then having to deal with this kind of nonsense and you know for me like even though he screamed that said i've actually been called much worse and i can Mm. we can get into that in another discussion that go it's way beyond the boundaries of hair right uh but i think as i become older i'm sure you like mind your environment how they say like mind your environment Mm. but you can't always you can't control your environment right all the time so you have built up systems within yourself when you do encounter these like they say you you can't control how someone reacts or what they say right. and do, but you can't really control how you react yes. to it. Right? Yeah, exactly. All the time. And having those conversations as well, I remember when I would talk a lot about this on social media, uh, hair discrimination, stereotypes, on what black hair can and can't do. Uh, I also would receive comments from black women, um, some black women that would say uh, the worst comments I received were from my own people. And I'll say this, I've received some horrendous comments from black women and black men. I've also received a lot, a lot, a lot of love from black women and black Mm -hmm. men. And I'll also say this, I haven't received vitriol more or less from any race. I've Mm -hmm. received a lot of love from Indian people, a lot of hate from Indian people, a lot Mm -hmm. of love from Asian people. Mm -hmm. A lot of hate from Asian people, a lot of love from white people, a lot of hate from white people. And I think because the circles I 
work in, I come across all different types of races right. and cultures and I've received the gamut. So it hasn't been so I think also too when people say that's probably what they're exposed to in their environment. But because of my line of work, I've been exposed to, to so many cultures and so many different races, I've experienced it all and I've received hate from most races that I've encountered. Right. But I've also received a lot of love. But for me, basing the love that I have for my hair isn't based on what other people think about it, good or bad, because I had to learn to love my hair when I was mainly just getting a bunch of vitriol. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I remember back in the day when I co-founded Urban Bush Babes, mm -hmm. there are boards, and I'm sure yes. there there still are Same boards. What, what do you call them? The forums? Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Boards, you know, groups people put online. Like Reddit and stuff. Like right, that. exactly. Mm -hmm. And the things... People, because I used to read it when we started out, and TK was like, "Why are mm -hmm. you reading those comments? Yeah. Why are you putting the energy into it?" And this was like what ten years ago, mm -hmm. and then I was like, "She's right. Why am I?" But I was just like, "Oh, I'm trying to put information out for our community." I took it like really personal, yeah. but you know, again, that is a deep, it's a direct reflection of who people are and how they treat people, what they say to people. Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with me. It right. has everything to do with them. And then when I read really learned and that was deep rooted into the way that I processed how people react mm -hmm. to you right then it it wasn't a concern anymore then it didn't bother me and then sometimes comments pop up now and I'm just like mm. is exactly. I know what that's about yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think too when I was much younger I would think that hey I could reason with people because it's so strange and odd yes. that people think that way about black hair and if I reason with them and just let them know like yes this can and they'll be like okay but there's nothing you can say right. to convince some people and it's not my job to convince them and it's not my job to exert my energy towards that for me I think people put too much obsession on what someone's hair mm -hmm. looks like, what they doing with their hair. I don't care. And I'm not one of the natural hair people that's like, oh, a black woman that has straightened hair is not black and is not embracing no. her culture. Yes. Nope. <laughs> Nada. Yeah. I don't care about that. I don't care what a woman has in her head. Because like it's natural, I, if it's weak, yes. if it's extension, if it's relaxed, if it's straightened. I don't care. What like I do I, care is how she treats people. Exactly. Because like I said, I within the industry, I met a plethora of people and I met some real down to the community women and they're wearing a weave or their hair straight and then on the total pole flip side. on the flip side mm -hmm. of that I met women that are natural black women women of color that are natural but don't even know the date of Martin Luther King's birthday like yeah. I mean like it, it just mm -hmm. <laughs> it really or not kind is, and yes people, it's so. not you can never judge a book by its color Hair is not indicative of whether you're black enough or your culture I, you know this just to me I feel like that's asinine right you know, think that way about a black woman I was like a black woman already receive enough hate not enough credit in this world, the last thing I'm be worried about is a black woman or her hair. Right. Like what she's doing with it. I mean, because what if you lose all your hair? Like right. your hair does not, it's not. Doesn't any, define you. No, it doesn't. And it's not a symbol of who you are and what you represent. Right. And I know that people, a lot of people always define us by our hair and fashion. But I have to say that once you get to know us, you'll know those are the two smallest things about us. Mm -hmm. I've never defined myself by my hair. Other people define myself by my hair. What is that line in DRV? Mm -hmm. I'm not my hair. No, no one is their hair. I wear my hair like this because I like it. But when I do talk about natural hair, I do like to talk about the hair discrimination that a lot of black right. men and women face in the industry, which is why the Crown Act and making it a federal mandate is so important. It's passed in a few states, mm -hmm. but not on a federal level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess this is a good time to jump into a break because yes. usually we I make the cocktails. Well, I've only made one cocktail since we've begun. Mm -hmm. So see where I was also taking over cocktail duties as well. Yeah, so I'm going to be making a cocktail. I haven't decided a name on it. It's something with apples and whiskey. It has apples, whiskey, cinnamon... Moscato, little ginger. Hmm. We'll think of a fun name. Yeah, we'll think of a fun thing. Okay. You know, because I, you know, like I said, everything in moderation. Because you don't right. want to be drinking alcohol mm -hmm. every single day. But we're going to work on that name. I think we can come up with something really fun. Yes, we can think of something fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. See you soon. <laughs> I'm excited. See you soon. <laughs> Wee. I see.
apples. I see wine. I see whiskey. Yeah, I love whiskey. It's my one of my favorite spirits. Yes, yeah, so this is this is actually TK's whiskey. Courtesy of TK. <laughs> Courtesy of TK. <laughs> I was like, what kind of whiskey should I use? Anything that TK recommends. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a cocktail connoisseur like TK is. She's so. incredible with making and mixing cocktails. Like, But so are you. Because, you know, it's not surprising to me that you would be good at this. Because this lady can make anything. You think, I don't have anything in my cabinet. <laughs> NC Brown will make something out of nothing. <laughs> and will be delicious. <laughs> So I have faith that this is going to turn out banging. When well, you said I make do. something out of nothing. Oh, thank you, TK. Done something out of nothing. nothing. Making something out of nothing. That's what you're going to well, do. It, that's actually the uh, like a new mayonnaise commercial or something. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's like <laughs> making something <laughs> out of nothing. nothing. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Thank you, oh, TK. Wow. Yeah, so what do we call it? We just call it an apple pie. Apple pie. Just apple pie because mm-hmm. it tastes like an apple pie in a cup. And like we always say, alcohol in moderation. Yes. But what we're making is definitely going to be kind of like a pitcher. So it's definitely going to be for like four to five people. Right. Or not just us. Right. Just not us. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, exactly. It was a long day. But I see apples, so yes. we hitting that healthy-ish. Even no, though the because alcohol, alcohol it just defeats out. Yes, yes, it I just know. defeats all purposes of whatever is healthy head, in that apple. In my head, I can believe. I believe that apples are future. Oh yeah, teach them teach. the way. Teach the children. Teach the, the way. apples all that they possess inside. The nutrition we possess inside. <laughs> we can learn to fly and eat a better meal. Uh oh. Now I've turned Don't into weird. Now I've turned into weird. <laughs> this, weird is Al Yankovic. Sec- this is not food segment <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I turned into weird Al Yankovic guys. <laughs> Okay, so let's just get started. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna take this. Um, it's a bottle of Moscato. It's actually our favorite. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is a serving size for three people. Okay. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's for more though, doesn't it? No. <laughs> for people that like to have a cocktail, a glass of wine, no. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is just you're gonna use one full bottle of Moscato because, like we said, by the time you're finished, this is going to be enough for four to Mm -hmm. six servings right depending on how big your glass is okay right exactly because you know i came up with quarantine pour during quarantine era of covid and i say you could have a regular pour or you could have a quarantine pour and myself i fancied a quarantine pour that would be a quarantine pour (laughs) (laughs) A pour. <laughs> it's a whole bottle. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's a quarantine pour. <laughs> then you're going to take about, you know, because I had to ask TK for advice about servings and mm-hmm. size and, and all that and measurement. So right now we already have two ounces of your whiskey. Okay. And I mixed it with cinnamon and a bit of honey. Okay. I have um, a, a friend that makes this fantastic cinnamon syrup. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is just whiskey, cinnamon, and a bit of honey, and about two ounces. Okay. So you would use it for, like, a lot of his cocktails. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to use two more ounces of the whiskey. Okay. But I know you started using cinnamon and smoothies a while back because yeah, cinnamon, cinnamon has great nutritional benefits. Yeah, it's a really good post-workout mm-hmm. to drink. This is Moscow Mule syrup, so honey ginger syrup. Mm. Honey, ginger, sold. <laughs> and this is blood orange syrup. Mm. And then you're gonna throw the apples in. I already cut them into four pieces. Just one whole apple. Mm-hmm. Bobbing for apples. Look at that. <laughs> That's the type of life. Instead of bobbing for apples and water, we bob for it in a whiskey. <laughs> Look at that, Bob and Frappers. <laughs> and then you're going to use a cup and a half of ice. Okay. We do love a blended drink, you know. 
We love a blended cocktail. Smoothies, anything blended. As you can see, it's it's nice, nice color. It looks like oh. a peach color. Nice yeah. peach color. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's it's going to settle a bit, so it'll be a bit foamy because of the Moscato, but mm -hmm. think about a full pitcher. Okay. It smells potent in a good way. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then I'm just going to garnish it with a little bit of thyme. Okay. We got time for that thyme. <laughs> that was cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smells like a, a really nice fragrance, too. It does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm, nice. Mm. Mm. Okay, don't steal that. The grease for the fragrance, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, our straws. Oh, yeah. yeah. For our teeth, y'all. Want to protect that enamel. Drink that alcohol with a, a straw. straw. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to go into the second break. A lady looked down this. This is <laughs> wow. Thank you, sis. Although I kind of am down it. <laughs> I forgot to have a nerd alert. No, remember? We no, we a... just did it, but technically we do nerd alerts on our food oh. portion. Oh, well, it could be thrown in anywhere. Oh. Nerd, nerd alert. Nerd alert. Nerd alert. Nerd alert. Proud nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Proud nerd stand united. Mm. This is phenomenal. Uh, I gotta stop drinking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the lady doesn't like to drink on the job. All the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Apple pie blew my mind. You know, I consider myself the cocktail connoisseur at home or mixologist in the family. But see, Brian surprised me. She's taking over my duties. <laughs> you're cooking and you're making the cocktails. I don't know if I'm that upset because all I get to do is <laughs> taste it, which is great for me, and there's no work required. So maybe I don't feel that bad about it, but. It was fantastic. Thank you so much, sis. I, I mean, you cocktail. inspired me. I did. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was just thinking about it now. I can't keep that stuff at home. I'm going to be apple pieing it every day. <laughs> <laughs> you Ooh. know I got to keep it in moderation, TK. And I'm not even that crazy about apple pie. Oh, really? No. It has to be made a particular yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I'm made, not and I the often biggest fan, but don't if you find a good one, that's true. Oh, like the apple crumble yes. pie, like crispy crust. Crumble. Yes, crust is important. Yes, and the topping, and it has to the crust. You know, people make pies like you have to think about the crust too. Yes. Throw some butter up in there. People be making pie crust taste all dry, like you're eating the exactly. I don't know, like paper. Yeah, I think crust makes all the difference your feet in 10 weeks or something get rid of that dead skin like pie crust it'd just be tasting i don't know where that reference came in about the feet, was, but what? i was thinking about the pie crust <laughs> and it being flaky and dry like, I, could, I could see yeah. the correlation yeah i don't know throw some butter up in there moisturize moisturize that crust yeah like you moisturize, moisturize your feet moisturize those feet yeah <laughs> But it was, it was banging. <laughs> Thank you, uh -huh. TK. All right, I guess we'll jump back a little bit more about yeah. hair. Yeah, we'll finish it after this episode because, you know, we only took a few sips to keep it, you know, professional. Mm-hmm. I can be professional have a sip or two. Yeah, a sip or two, not the whole drink. Like last time, I have a, I have a high tolerance, so yeah. I probably could. Maybe no, not. because I know for a fact TK doesn't drink 
when she is performing. That's true. So when she's I practicing, don't. performing, I don't. zilch, no alcohol. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very true. That's right. Very true. Mm -hmm. That's true. True that. Mm -hmm. True. True. Okay. <laughs> Just a taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll let you begin this. I felt like I was just running my mouth on the first <laughs> Uh, if you can't tell, no, I have a lot you, to say on the topic. No, I mean, <laughs> say what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Running your mouth, or just yeah. I mean, I, I meant more so than you because you know I feel very passionate about right this subject. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I am too. I guess like over the years, you know, at the end of the day, it is hey, I feel that you and I understand that, but there's a lot of people that put a lot of importance and value in what's on our head or mm -hmm. what's on someone else's head. And right. I, you know, you and I feel completely different. I'm not concerned about what's on your head, but what's going within your head and within your heart. Right. And remember the time when we were on the Steve Harvey show? Yeah. It was so fun. So we were yeah, guests on the fun. Steve Harvey show and we were the stylists. So we were styling sets of twins. I think yeah, we they had up. guests, so we were like their their, their featured guests. Featured and guests we were for the day stylist, and we styled four or five sets of twins. Yeah, four sets of twins. Mm -hmm. When we took a photo of Steve Harvey, who's fantastic, really nice person, uh, we got a chance to talk to him after the show as well. But we took a photo, and the show posted it on Facebook, mm -hmm. and we received an onslaught. Of negative comments so much so that um, someone was reading that was close to me at the time and I said don't read them don't read the comments <laughs> and it was just a bunch of ugly comments about how people hated the way our hair looked mm -hmm. and instead of and these are these are grown folks right grown <laughs> folks yes um, <laughs> attacking haranguing to young black women, I thought, hey, instead of being so concerned about our hair looks, maybe you'd be like, oh, these two young women are doing their thing and they're actually really trying to bring issues of diversity and inclusivity in the fashion industry and bring a spotlight on black designers. And they're actually in these circles where two young black women with their type of natural hair hasn't been seen on that type of level mm -hmm. before. So you think people would congratulate us or be happy for us, but no, <laughs> they were just concerned yeah. and worried and expressing their hate for our hair. Hey, like, don't be concerned about us, be concerned about yourself. Right, and I said, I just had a good day. I just yeah. came off the Steve Harvey yeah. show. Yes. I had, we had a fantastic time. <laughs> and when I saw people's comments, I said, no one's gonna bring me down today. <laughs> Is that a Broadway? It is. It is. I felt like I was going to break out to a musical. Ooh, I can't recognize it. I didn't know which one it was, but the no but the tonation of it, it sounded yes. just like it's from some kind of we'll musical. Bring me down today. <laughs> no one. That's the way I felt. You know, in your head, sometimes you have theme songs. Right. I felt nope, nope, not today, not today, not tomorrow, mm -hmm. not you know, years from now, and that's speaks volumes about how far I had come along in our natural hair journey, right. where I didn't give up, you know what I'm right. gonna say, about what everyone thought about my hair. And I thought I was such a liberating and beautiful place to be. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, cause we have received so many comments, you just, and it's so interesting how people think that They'll say something to you and they'll like, have you heard that before? And I'm like, yes. yeah, you've received some wild comments. Yeah. yeah. I remember one time I was at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and they were having an exhibit and it was crowded. And I think it was the first day the exhibit was premiering. Mm -hmm. And this, there was a white woman and she was standing behind me and she was shorter. That's another thing. People are surprised by us, by our height. It's, you know, <laughs> like I'm 5'11", TK's 5'10 and a half, and that's without heels. So when we wear heels, then we're like 6'4", 6'5", you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But anyway, I wasn't wearing heels. I was in some cute little flat-footed boot, some sort. <laughs> yeah. my, my museum attire of the day. Like, quick flat-footed boot. <laughs> <laughs> cute. What'd you say? Some cute flat-footed boot. <laughs> Cute flat footed boot. <laughs> That's how a flat footed boot should be described from now on. <laughs> so 
after she was like standing behind me so i wasn't even in my full you know six four six five glory just my natural height mm -hmm. five eleven and she was upset that i was in front of her i was like first of all i got here about two hours early than you did mm -hmm. line wrapped around mm -hmm. so if you wanted to get my spot then maybe she woke up a little bit early and showed up two hours prior to the exhibit which is what happened to me i hear that well i showed up one time in the exhibit but i was there like it was a long and i forgot what is it maybe it was Alexander McQueen. Okay. Dude. I, yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, mm -hmm. and she said a comment behind I me. wasn't there. No, you weren't yeah. there. I was with an, another girlfriend mm -hmm. at the time. And she was like, ah, oh, excuse me. You should like move out of the way, you big tree. <laughs> I was like, I was like, first of all, at first I didn't know she was talking to me. So I turned around. I was like, excuse me? And she's like, you heard me. I was like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, well, hear this. <laughs> I was like, first of all, thank you because trees supply oxygen to the air and the plants. And they also provide habitat to about 80% of the world's testosterone biodiversity. So, you're welcome that you're breathing today because of me. Bye. And she just kind of stood there like, and my girlfriend was like, I think that has to be probably like one of the most non-confrontational, but confrontational educational clapbacks I've ever heard of. It's called a classy clapback, folks. <laughs> See, Brad said she was above them, but obviously she's very well adept at them. It's natural. It's innate. That's a classic clapback. That's fantastic. You threw the science on her too? <laughs> Damn. She probably didn't know what happened. Nerd alert. Nerd, nerd alert. alert. Oh, yes. Nerd, nerd alert. alert. Yes. We love a nerd alert. Oh, that's so good. Industrial biodiversity. Like, You're welcome, lady. You're living in my world. She was probably flabbergasted. Like, what I, does I, that mean? I don't even think she could even, like, <laughs> I think what she was thinking is that I was going to give her attitude mm -hmm. back, you know, because mm -hmm. that's what people, you know. A lot of times people that project that energy want the same energy yes. back because they want you to feel just as miserable and mm -hmm. tired and disgusting as they are. And then sometimes it can diffuse the situation and then sometimes right. it can also escalate, escalate it because, because people get upset that you're, you're not responding right. with the same energy that they're given. And I'm like, look, I'm full of joy. Yes. You're going to be upset this joy? It's your problem. But then, like, also, too, like, on the flip side, we received so much love yes. for our hair yeah. as well. A lot of love, a lot of support. Mm -hmm. I remember another comment, just to show you the range of comments that we get. There was this little girl walking with her daddy. I remember I was walking past Barnes & Nobles, and this little girl goes, like, Daddy, Daddy, your hair looks like a cloud. Is that where Mommy is? She's in heaven in the clouds. And Aww. her dad was like, yes. And... And she was just like looking and I stopped and I was like, oh, thank you so much. I was like, that's such a beautiful comment. And I was like, you know, I love your dress. And she was just like this. <laughs> and oh, I just thought so that was sweet. so sweet. Yeah. yeah, so beautiful. You're yeah. right. I I think I stressed that as well in the beginning. You did. We received a lot of love for our hair. Yeah. And I think it's a beautiful thing. I just think that uh, there's just so much stereotypes and antiquated notions wrapped around yeah, there is. natural hair. Did you ever remember this case? Oh, Chastity Jones, mm. this woman that had been hired for a job, but the offer was rescinded because she refused to cut her locks because <laughs> they said it went against their grooming standards. Yes. And let me just say this quickly. These grooming standards are based, again, on Eurocentric mm -hmm. standards of what's professional and acceptable. The way my hair grows out of my head, which is the Afro texture, that's not seen as professional, presentable in these antiquated grooming standards, especially when you're talking about the corporate world. I remember outside of the corporate world, there was also this huge article on Black women in the newsroom and newscaster right. industry. And they said for the longest time, which has been great because over the last few years, you've seen Black newscasters mm -hmm. wear their hair and locks and braids and twists. And it's been a beautiful thing seeing the evolution. But before, they couldn't wear their hair like that. They always had to wear it straightened or defined by these antiquated notions of grooming. So this is from an Essence article. But I remember this is a big case um, because the Supreme Court 
decided that the circuit court that said that it wasn't discriminatory for this company to rescind the offer decided that they want to hear the case okay which is why when we talk about the crown act and this was before the crown act why the crown act is so essential but they said in a 3-0 decision the 11th circuit court of appeals dismissed the case brought by the equal employment opportunity commission against the company that refused to hire a woman because she wouldn't cut off her locks according to the wall street journal chastity jones applied to work at a management solutions company in 2010 and was initially hired, but the role came with one condition. Jones was told that she had to cut off her locks in order to comply with the company's grooming policy. She refused to do so and the job offer was rescinded. The EEOC alleged in this case that banning locks constitutes race discrimination because dreadlocks yeah. are wearing the hair that is culturally associated with people of African descent. The EOC said that the argument was based on an understanding of race as a social construct that has no biological definition. The Supreme Court, long story short, ruled against hearing the case because they deemed it not discriminatory for this company to rescind the offer because mm -hmm. the woman refused to cut her locks. And this was an error before the Crown Act. So when we talk about the Crown Act and we talk about these grooming standards, we know what they're, again, what well, they are. I remember that, um that game with that young um, black teenager, he was in a wrestling match, I and should. they made him cut, cut off his, his locks. locks. Yes. <laughs> to participate, to be able to compete mm -hmm. within the game. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember writing about that and mm -hmm. posting about it at the time when it happened. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of that going on, especially there was a young girl in South Africa who was dealing with her school banning her from wearing her natural hair, which was an afro. Right. Was a, a lot of cases, not only men and women, but young children that have to deal with discrimination and racism when it comes to their hair. And sort of this antiquated idea, again, that's based on Eurocentricism. Right. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about our hair, I think the main thing I knew when we were working in the fashion industry and I saw very little representation of our 4 c hair is I just wanted young girls and young women to see us in the represent see us as a representation that was lacking, and we had to be our own representation because growing up I rarely saw anyone with our texture in mainstream media, uh, especially in fashion. Right, and also to be judgmental, also to regarding the way that you wear your hair. I've been wearing my hair this way for years and years and years. And because I work out so much, I have just found a hairstyle that really works for me and my schedule. And I'll have people say, well, you should change your hairstyle. You should do this with your hair. You should do that with your hair. Is anybody going up to Anna, Anna Winter, Winter and saying that? Is anyone going up to Anna Winter mm -hmm. and saying you I've should change your hair thing. after how many years has she been wearing the same mm -hmm. hairstyle? I've always said that. I yeah. mean, like, mm -hmm. and it looks great. So if you're doing what works for you, just mind your business. Right. And also, too, <laughs> people want to know the reason why our hair, how we get the length that we achieve right. and the thickness. People don't like to talk about jeans because let's face it, not everyone can achieve the same length. Not everyone can achieve the same thickness. It also has to do with genetics. But also, too, a big reason as well for us is because of low manipulation. Mm -hmm. So when people want to be like, why they always wear the hair? I mean, I do change my hair. Yeah, you change more, your hair more than I do. In the latter years, but for the big bulk of my natural journey, I would wear one style mostly but i always wear a braid out because mm -hmm. that prevents tangling when people want to ask questions about our hair low manipulation is a huge one for us in maintaining lengths our strands are the most fine so we have to be the most gentle. It, exactly you just cannot get over consumed by what everyone else thinks about what you should be doing mm -hmm. with your own hair or just basically with your life in general right. i remember i put up a video on YouTube, this was probably in 2012, mm. 2013, when I was uh, working on the website and I put this tutorial video up, I was parting my hair, because you know, everyone was like, well, we can't see your scalp. I was like, of course you can't see my scalp, my hair is thick. Um, <laughs> sometimes I can't even see my scalp when I'm doing my scalp, so I know you're not going to see it. <laughs> And I did this video and I was like parting my hair, you know, to show my scalp mm -hmm. because there was all this, you know, my hair was about 
probably half the length it is now mm -hmm. and people still didn't believe because it was thick that it was all mine mm -hmm. and i put this a video and people were like oh oh yeah you know thank you for doing that and then some people were like it still ain't real mm -hmm. like so you know right. it just doesn't mm -hmm. it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter you cannot mm -hmm. please the only person you should be trying to please is yourself right does it work for you right uh, other than that, mm -hmm. it's... You think I got all day trying to convince people? <laughs> no. And do I want to be doing it? No. No. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know a bit. Say goodbye. Oh. Oh, I see the door. No, 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 no. As Matumbo said, not today. <laughs> no. I wouldn't spend all day doing all that. I got a lot of better things to be doing. Yes. This is one of the reasons why I always bring up that we don't define ourselves by our hair. Like I said, again, you get to know us, you know, that the smallest things about us is hair and fashion. Right. You know, I love fashion. I love my hair. But that's not the biggest percentage of what makes me me. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it's I mean the you want to get a percentage of how maybe other people perceive right. me but not how i perceive myself exactly i mean at the end of the day it's like we're speaking about aesthetics and mm -hmm. that's what it is and it you know i do think it plays a it can help inspirational wise because you know because we love fashion so right. much but i think at the end of the day what we're trying to convey it, exactly convey is that it doesn't make the person like you know what i'm saying it doesn't define who the person is mm -hmm. at the end of the day what's going on inside here what's going on yeah. inside here what are you doing with your health are you mm -hmm. treating yourself right yeah these are the questions we should be asking yes no but i think one day we'll, we also should dive into regimen because a lot of people have questions i've i've talked about my regimen to blue in the face don't blue in the face. I mean, this is pretty much the same regimen I've been doing for almost 15 years. True. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Here. I mean, I have changed it up slightly. Yeah. So I'll do a braid out and then. But a big part of my regimen is never washing my hair all out. I always wash it in braids. Right. I could never exactly. even. I would never even deign the same no. to wash my hair not in braids. That's been the biggest part, which cuts down a lot on tangled hair. Yeah. Cause I wash it in braids. Yeah, because I always explain to people, like, oh, why do you wash your hair with braids for, you know, people that may not be well-versed in the natural hair community? Right. Explain it as, imagine taking a spool of thread and just cutting like, 500 pieces of thread and then dunking it all in water and then try to detangle all those pieces of thread. So That's washing our... <laughs> bit of I, was like, I was like, where's she going with this? And, I, and I'm visualizing it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good I was like, one. where's she going? Oh, I always, oh, got, I always okay. got faith in you. Yes. But, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> So, you know, I imagine it, you mm -hmm. know, that's the visualization yeah. that I give to people, which is the reason why we always wash our hair in big mm -hmm. braids. Yeah, I would never wash my hair that's loose. Cool. I'm still fascinated by that analogy. Oh, it's great. You can use it next time. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hopefully you enjoyed our hair tale. Yes. <laughs> we'll do another one in the future. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's so many more interesting comments. Also, too, in relation to work, how we've dealt with oh, natural hair. Yes. Uh, in our lines of work mm -hmm. and in the latter years of working together mm -hmm. professionally how people handle your hair mm -hmm. in the fashion industry yeah black hair oh, oh my god a shoot this was in my early 20s when i said hell to the no to modeling right which is why c brown was really naturally just very good at modeling in the latter years when we started to work together after you started ubb I became good at it because we're incorporating things that we like. Right. Things we talk about, just sisterhood, diversity, including our writing. So it was really fun. Mm -hmm. I was able to do some music. It just wasn't being online. like a mannequin. Right. Which is nothing wrong. Right. With There's that. nothing wrong with that. But for right. us, we wanted to do something different. Then when it was just straight modeling, I disliked it. I remember it. being on the shoot and I remember this hair. 
hairstylist did not know how to work my hair. So she was, first of all, she was combing from the root. Mm. She wasn't combing from the ends and working her way up. She was combing through I just remember looking down and seeing clumps of my freaking hair on the floor. And from then I said, no more. I always do my hair on shoots. Yeah, I did a Paul Mitchell campaign and I came in onto set with a full head of hair and left with half oh of my what I came in with. Yeah. They had no idea. Mm. The stylist had no idea how to work with my texture, how to properly straighten my hair. And it takes time. And they don't yes. have that kind of time right. in set. Which is why I also say I don't let anyone do my hair when we when we ever we work together right. in is because it takes patience. Mm -hmm. And frankly, the time that's allotted to shoot is not the time that's required to style my hair because you have to be extremely gentle. Patient and gentle. Patient and gentle. Mm -hmm. They don't call it TLC for nothing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So we got a lot to talk about on that subject. So that would be a good, another yeah, good that episode would be a good, too. Yeah, another episode idea. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey. So if you have <laughs> any questions for us, and this, hey, this is a time to ask your hair question. Yeah, sure. You know. I always say we always precursor <laughs> before. Oh, you got questions for us, but, you know, just not about hair. Just not about hair. This is the time to ask your questions. Your hair questions. Yes. Yeah, this is a good time to ask yeah, your questions. Yeah, it's a good time to ask your questions. Because we're talking about hair. Yeah. So feel free. Yeah. Feel free. Yeah, I just don't want to be talking about trauma. And then someone's like, what's your hair regimen? Which I had received. Yeah, I saw one of those comments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, this is the time. You know, ask the appropriate question to win the appropriate episode. Yes, That's all we ask. <laughs> thank you. But thank you so much for joining us. Episode yes. 8. Yay. Yay. We really appreciate it. You know, when we reach episode 10, it's going to be a party. Yes. <laughs> People be like, which episode? Is this the 100th episode? Uh, no, it's the 10th episode. episode. <laughs> Like we said, we like to celebrate life know, over here. Exactly. Yeah, you never, never know. Life's short. Never take one day for granted. Exactly. So we're not taking episode eight for granted. Exactly. It's a celebration. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for joining yes. us. Yes. I'll see you next week. As always, it's been such a joy to be able to share these moments with you. See you next week. Yeah. On Chew on Something. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs>